What's going on, guys? And welcome to Rabbit's Used Cars. I know you see it. I know it's here. Chevelles. I love, hell, GMA bodies in general. You know, Buicks, Osmobiles, Pontiac GTOs. I love a body GM products. What's well, near and dear to the old ice maker? The Chevy Chevelle. And I've owned of several of them over the years. You know, of course, my Malibu SS. We had a 70 LS powered. But this right here, this one, 396 cubic inches. 375 horsepower. Going through a turbo hydromatic 400 trans. Running right into, well, it should be a 12 volt. This one actually has a 10. I'll get into that. And spinning them 20 by 10s on the back. Can I get a damn amen? Amen. 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 Preach. But I'm going to tell you something. I love Chevelles. And apparently, my love for Chevelles must be contagious because these things have gotten high. And it's like, insane right now. You can't touch a big block Chevelle. Hell, scratch big block. You can't touch a Chevelle running, driving, ready to go car for less than 30 grand right now, which is nuts. And then you start talking about big block Chevelles, just go ahead and throw another 10 in there on up. I mean, you start getting into 70s, sell your damn house, buy your Chevelle. It's gone insane. Auction last week, going nuts, bidders going crazy. And I'm gonna tell you something, these cars are selling. Not only are they asking crazy ass prices, but they're selling for crazy ass prices. So that takes me to this Chevelle. 1967 Chevrolet Chevelle. Super Sport, big block. Good old Rumpty Rump 396. There's only one small catch. You know, devil's in the details. She didn't begin life this way. She began life as a little small block automatic Malibu. There's nothing wrong with that. So what they did is they made a clone or a recreation. If you're watching Bear Jackson or here in the South, they made a super sport. And I'll be honest with you, there's more super sport cars today than were ever produced pretty much common practice. Every Camaro, every Chevelle, Super Sport, Super Sport, Super Sport. The difference is how far they take it. To make a car a true Super Sport, you have to spend lots of money to make it right. And even then, you know, you can put your Super Sport hood and Super Sport emblems and your Super Sport grill and black out the tail light panel like a Super Sport and got Super Sport emblems on the back and it's got the bucket seats and the console and the knee knocker tack, which this car has every bit of. But there's one thing, just one thing that you can't change. Well, you can change, but the federal government will have a little issue with you if you do, is that trim tag on the firewall. I'll give you a quick little Chevelle lesson. You look at the trim tag, look at the VIN number on this car. First three digits of the VIN, 136. You're like, man, you memorized it? No, that's what a Malibu is in 1967. And six is 136. Now, if it was a Super Sport, it'd be 138. That's the catch. Does it make it a bad car? No, this car don't know it's, it's not a Super Sport. And I'll be honest with you, probably it was a better car to start with restoring it. Because I want to tell you something, and I've said this before about muscle cars, these cars did not live an easy life. You gotta understand, the textbook definition of a muscle car is an intermediate body with a large displacement engine. That's usually a recipe for disaster because these were cheap cars with big motors that went fast, which were usually bought by teenagers early 20s, and these cars got tortured. They got cut up and made in drag cars. 
slung in the ditches, made round track cars out of them. I mean, do you know how many damn kids have been made in the backseat of a car like this? That's right, I'm talking to you. Right there. Don't feel bad. There's a little rumor floating around that I was, might have been conceived in the back seat of a duster. Yeah, I know. Talk about being born under a bad sign, Mopar. But you gotta think about the little Malibus. This is, you know, businessman's car, or just a normal car. Yeah, it's a big car, even as a two door sport coupe. Sport coupe that's 17 and a half foot long. But a sport coupe, I mean, this thing is as big as a four door Impala inside now. That's the cool thing about these cars. I mean, you can stretch out. You know, I used to joke around all the time, and my dad's in the Corvettes, and I love them too. My dad's a diehard mid year Corvette guy, 6'3, 67, he loves them. In his opinion, they stopped making Corvettes in 1967, just hands down. And the Corvettes I love the most are the ones they started making after 67. So, might have been the whole thing being conceived in the back of a Dodge, but I just like them. So, long story short, I'll never forget riding around in my Chevelle, going down the road, running through the gears. It was a four speed, this is automatic. You don't really necessarily do that in this one. But anyway, going through the gears. I said, you feel that? I said, you feel that? I said, feel what? I said, you feel that? You feel it? He goes, what the hell are you talking about, Robbie? I said, I grabbed him right there by the inside of his leg. I said, right, right there, you feel it? Going down the road, 50, 60 mile an hour. You feel it? So what's that? I said, it's ballroom, son. It's a man car. Man car, ballroom, little word association there. These cars are super popular, super fun, super valuable, even the non-SS cars. This, right, this car here is a mid-30s car all day, any day of the week. Laying in bed, Sunday morning, Webster, laying right there in my lap and got my, got my telephone out. Just kick back in my Ugg slippers, scrolling, sipping on coffee. And I saw it. Saw this clean little white pawpaw Chevelle on rally wheels for sale on Marketplace. Message. I would like to come look at that. And it's local. I mean, hell, I buy cars all over the damn country. And it's so nice when it's like, 45 minutes away. Guy messaged me back. Hey, I got a guy that's coming to 11 to look at it. He's going to have to borrow the money, but he just wants to look at the car first. And I said, can you call me? And I gave him my phone number. Phone rings. And I said, listen, I ain't got to borrow shit. I've got this in the glove box of my truck. I said, if you want to sell the car, I'd love to come look at it. Well, he said he's running a little late. And I said, I'll see you in 45 minutes. Hop my ass up, run my fingers through my spikes, walked around it twice, fired it up. I knew I was going to own it, and I did. Sent my trailer jockey down to pick it up the following Monday. Brought her back. I've owned this car eight days now. Eight days. Picked it up the following Monday. First thing I do, I ring up my rim guy. Hey. Big, tall, wide, 18s and 20s. Went over there to the old summitracing.com. Got me some of them BMR lowering springs. We dropped this bitch on her nuts, threw some big rollers on it, cleaned it up. Voila, I beat the pawpaw off of it. I gave the white letters away, got rid of those. I mean, just really updated this car. And I know somebody's gonna say, well, I like it better with them rally wheels. And that's fine. That's fine. I understand that. I know a lot of people don't like the big wheels. Usually the ones that can't afford them say it. Hate me. I don't care. Big wheels. This thing hits the road like a dream. I think about this thing. 17 and a half foot long. This bitch floats going down the road. Just cruise. Got a little big block. Got that rumble. She's got some. She's got a little ass to her too. She'll jump when she needs to. A big girl. She moves quick. But I want to tell you something though. Great all around cars. I've actually enjoyed driving it the last three and a half hours. I mean, like, I mean, it's, it's actually a little dirty. It started raining and I 
you know, usually I'm like, well, I better put this thing back up in the warehouse. So wipers, wipers work. I just go drive and I just a good car. And I, I mean, that's the thing. Like I, I never get to drive old cars anymore like that, like drive, drive. You know, I used to be that guy that was, you know, in the neighborhood, always had a new car, new old car every week, you know. And and now, you know, I'm the guy in the neighborhood with a big mall crawler douchebag Silverado now. You, you get slack in your ways of driving hot rods. You know, they're a lot of fun. And once you do it, you love it. But, you know, it's just like getting yourself to that. So anyway, like I told you, I got a good story for you about Chevelles. Involves a Ford, too. Because I know you Ford guys are out there. I ain't, I ain't leaving you out. So my very first collector car, 1963 Falcon Sprint. I absolutely hated that car with a passion when I first saw it. I will never forget. It was literally right here in West Greenville. I was, my dad was telling me about it. And he goes, it's a pretty cute little car, son. And I'm thinking to myself, this is not my idea of a hot rod I wanted. And we get there, and there's this little shop. The door opens up. There's this little baby blue Ford Falcon. And, you know, 1963 Falcon, Google it. It's not a very aggressive-looking car. Little two-door hardtop. Baby blue with two-tone blue vinyl interior. Console had a four-speed in it. Little. I mean, some man was telling you about 18s and 20s. Little 14 by 7 American Racing Mags on it with 195, 60, 15 tires on it. Little wheels. That's the biggest tires you can wheel, tires wheels you can put under a 63 Falcon without major modification. I'm thinking, mm, powder blue, little wheels, you know, just, mm, it's all right, I don't know. Because you can afford something like this, though. I mean, maybe I should just save my money and get some more money and get something like this or something. He opens the hood. Under the hood was probably the prettiest Ford engine I've ever seen in my life. And I've got a lot of sick friends, so I know a lot of Ford people. And I've seen some impressive Ford engines. This thing had a 289 K-code solid lift cam Three deuces, and like I said, four-speed transmission. I mean, pretty impressive. Headers, you fire. He said, fire it up, and he fired up, and this son bitch rattled the ground, this little Falcon did. Like, it didn't sound like that engine noise was coming from that car. I mean, total sleeper. Because you got to think, a 63 Falcon came with a 260 in it. And it's got the little Keiko 289, and I mean, he's just sitting there, boop, boop, boop. I mean, hell, it sounded like a big block Chevrolet idling, this little 289 did. The thing about a solid lift motor like that is it doesn't have hydraulic lifters in it. It's got solid lifters in it. So there's really no such thing as red line. There's wide ass open and scatter. That definitely got my attention when my dad told me that. I thought that was kind of cool. So the guy took me up the road in it, and he just kind of went through the gears with it. And yeah, he busted an ass a little bit, but not hard. You know. I liked it. We put a deal together, and I got it. And naturally, like any old car, there's always going to be something you have to do to it or something you want to do to it to make it your own. A little Falcon had a little overheating issue. Falcons had the same problem that 65 Mustangs have, which is virtually the same car at the bottom, is the radiator was extremely small. You know what? Old buddy fixed me up with this sweet little four-core aluminum radiator, went right back in the spot, put her in. That thing's cool as a cucumber. It had a little running problem, though. It was really crazy. You'd fire that thing up, and, and it, I mean, it was just, I mean, it would just sit there and run perfect. It would run perfect. And you could be sitting there driving it, and you'd go to accelerate with it one time, and that thing would lay you back and see. it would feel like it was going to put you in the fucking trunk. I mean, it would just shit and get. Then the next time you hit it, it'd fall on its fucking face. Just die. And it killed me. Drove me insane. Now I know why the old man didn't bust an ass. He didn't know if it was going to go or not. Had an original fuel tank or an old, an old fuel tank in it. So we dropped the fuel tank out. Same thing as a Mustang. Put a new fuel tank in it. All new fuel filters. All new fuel lines. 
And you know, I told you I had this tri-power setup on the engine. You had to have what they call a fuel log for the tri-power setup. And basically, that's the fuel line goes into this log, which holds the fuel, and it feeds the carburetors. It had this, and all this stuff, it had aluminum Ford intake, had Ford carburetors on, like everything was Ford on this thing. It had this beautiful gold anodized fuel log, like it was pretty under the hood. It had all the fin stuff on the motor, it had the big Cobra Jet air cleaner on it, like it was wild. I mean, this thing, you got to think about big old strut towers. I mean, it was just packed in there, all this 289. And, and we replaced every line on it. And you'd rev that thing up and drive it and <laughs> take the carburetors apart and have trash and carburetors. As a matter of fact, it got so bad that my dad paid $50 for a snap-on screwdriver that you could flip and go from Phillips to flat. That's all it took to take the bowls off the carburetors. And so I could do it on the side of the road and clean the bowls out, put it back in, fire it back up and never miss a beat. And then it'd go good for a little while longer. Do you gas tank, do you fuel line, fuel filters, all that stuff's clean. How in the hell's it getting trash in the carburetors? I finally dated said, let me drive it for you for a little while. I was going to drive it. Now keep in mind, this is the same guy that busted my ass every day on the way to school in the Camaro when I was driving the Mustang. So my dad is driving my Ford to work, driving to the shop every day. He brought it home, he'd drive to the shop. Brought it home, drive to the shop. Every dollar I had to my name went in this car. At the time, I mean, like, I was broke as a joke. He was driving it back forth, back forth. I think we got it fixed. The next day I come in, he that thing started showing its ass again. So they got to piddling with it at the shop. And let me stop this story to kind of tell you another story. So at the same time, a really good friend of my dad was the lieutenant of police for the city here in Greenville. And he came to my dad. He's looking for a hot rod. He's looking for an old car. And he said, what do you want? He said, I want a muscle car. You know, he said, what do you want? He said, I don't know. When I see it, I know, I know it's it. Well, he comes showing up in a red 1967 Chevrolet Chevelle. A lot like this one was before we lowered it. White letter tires, rally wheels, hot little 396 in it. Supposedly it was a hot 396 and it actually run like shit. It was killing plugs. My dad and his guys pulled the motor out. They freshened that old 396 up, put a hot cam in it, and had the heads worked on it and changed a few things. And they got this old 396 where she was walking the dog pretty good. It was something you didn't want to jump on. You know, the little car was, was hot. And he, was, he was a little cocky with it. And he actually lived at the end of our street on top of this. So back to the Falcon. My dad's like, where in the hell is this trash coming from getting in the carburetors? And he's looking at that gold fuel log. And it's beautiful. And he even called the guy up that built the car that we got it from. He said, hey, you know the problem he's having? He goes, son, I've been having that problem for years with that damn car. There's no telling. He said, everything on it's new old stock. All that motor stuff is. Carburetors intake, fuel log. My dad takes that fuel log and just takes a hacksaw, cuts the end of it off. And he fills up a 20 ounce Pepsi bottle about that far up, just full of trash out of it, just over the years. It was actually rusting inside out. Absolutely beautiful on the outside, rotten on the inside. A lot like my first wife. So they cleaned that thing out, blasted it, all this stuff. Put the, put the end back on it. My dad actually tigged it all back together. It was down for a few days. Had the piece repowder coated. I was all pretty back. I mean, you couldn't even tell. Put it all back together. Old Falcon's own kill. Wow, wow. And there's nothing like a three-deuce car. I mean, yeah, I know they got fuel injection and all that now, but really and truthfully, there's nothing like a three-deuce car. A car with three two-barrel carburetors has progressive linkage. And progressive linkage is basically it runs off one carburetor. As you accelerate, it kicks another one in. Well, it's kind of like a four-barrel kicking in. Well, then you got another two that come in that, no, nah, no, nah, you just you just feel it. You feel it right in your ass. I mean, just when it takes off, you can just feel it. And there's just something about a three-deuce car, whether it's a GTO or, you know, some kind of hot rod or whatever. Just a three-deuce car is just killer, even on a vet. They're awesome. Oh, Falcon's on kill. You know, he adjusts the valves on it, and she was just on kill. He's about ready to give her back to me when Randy, the lieutenant of police, comes rolling up at the shop in his Chevelle. And him and my dad leave at the same time, headed home. This was a Friday evening. And I'm sitting there in the driveway, leaning against my black 
94 GT Mustang, waiting on my dad to get home with my Falcon. And next thing you know, blah, 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 blah. And then I see that red Chevelle running right behind it, blah, 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 across the bridge, turning on the end of the street, coming down the driveway. And we had a long driveway, went downhill. Little Falcon pulls in, they smiling ear to ear. Pulls up little Falcon, boop, blah, boop, just count them all. He tosses me the keys, and that red Chevelle comes pulling in right behind it, puking water out from the bottom of it. Randy gets out, he goes, what in the hell has that damn Falcon got in it? He goes, just a little small block. You know what I mean? And you're like, you'll put a big block in a Falcon, easily anyway. The open hood's like, damn, that little motor in that thing. I run this big old big block Chevelle. It actually, the reason it ran hot is actually he turned that Chevelle so hard trying to catch that Falcon that it slung the belts off that Chevelle. Now, keep in mind, he turned it so hard, it threw the belts off of it. And I'm not talking about that Falcon, you know, got him by a fender. You know, I ain't talking about that Falcon. My dad was shifting this bitch at like 7,500. The little factory tack, all the sprints did on the dash. And it went to like 7,500. And that's when he shifted. When it bottomed out, he put another gear on it. My dad, like I said, many times before, clutch pedals for starting and stopping. Top loader, four speed. I'm gonna tell you something. It ate that Chevelle's ass alive. Probably the one time in my life that my dad actually bragged on a car that I owned and a Ford being fast was that. They move now, he's retired, and they move down to the beach. And every time I see him, he always tells me about that time that little Falcon ate that damn Chevelle's ass alive. And that's, that's why I love Ice Court. Always a good story there and, and all that. But, you know, I miss that old Falcon. You know, I sold it. Now, like I said, that Falcon was a down payment on my first house. And it was a great car, a lot of fun. But you know what? I think I'm going to have a little more fun with the Chevelle. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. I'm going to tell you something. When it comes to social media, you see what happened to my space. You don't get away at Facebook. Yep. <laughs> oh, Remember that. I got a call. Hello? That son of a bitch is ugly. So, when seeing my buddy's a Griffin radiator, that scared the living shit out of me. Yeah. <coughs> it's that f***ing chupacabra. <laughs> anyway, so, some of bitches are rampant around these parts. It ate that Chevelle's ass alive. He was madder than hell. Magical. <laughs>